everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here back at Painted Studio working on a couple of projects. And yesterday I had planned to do a second live and well, that just didn't happen. So now we're back, we're doing another live. I'm trying to get us set up on my other iPad so I can see what's going on and see all the wonderful comments everybody shares. And so we're gonna go pretty quickly into stuff. So the other day I showed you the wreath. I didn't love how it came out. I thought it looked pretty dull, the wooden wreath cut out. So I have put fresh foil adhesive over the old foil and we're going to foil directly over what we did before. Now I could have painted the whole thing over and I could have started from scratch, but I'm working with the same similar kind of colors. Hi, Brenda, nice to see you here. Um, I'm working with the same colors that I already worked with, so I might as well leave it on there. It kind of works with the whole theme. So we're gonna flip down and get into stuff right away and move into our project. Sorry about my hand in front of the screen. So here we are. I think you all can see that. Let me check. I may pull this out just a little bit, just a little higher so you get a little tighter view or a little clearer view, not tighter view. There we go, a little better. I moved it up a little just so you could see a little better. So we have our flower power stencil placed on the wooden cut, the wreath cut out. Now we carry all of the products you're gonna see me working with. So be excited. Now I'm gonna take my hand, uh, hand brace off just because I need it to be able to cut some, uh, uh, some foils and stuff so don't Everybody worry, and I know it's gonna look very bruised on camera. I, got, I heard that yesterday, but we're okay. Okay, so let me peel off the uh, shipment label so then I can actually peel off a piece of, uh, unroll a piece of foil. I don't know about you, but this crazy weather, it was gorgeous out this morning and, well, I shouldn't say gorgeous. It was nice out this morning, clear, easy, pleasant work, and, and now it's pouring buckets outside. And I just, and yesterday it was 80 degrees, and today it's 50, so God help me. I um, can't dress for the weather or anything. Hey, Sandy, nice to see you. Okay, so this is our brand new wood grain gold foil. This is so pretty, so we're gonna put it through our flower power stencil. We have coated the wreath, but not the bow, because that's gonna take a different color later, uh, with our Artsyville foil adhesive. Again, that's all available at paintedstudio.com. We're gonna lay this down. Now, I can pick which way I want my grain to go. I can pick it this way or this way, but once I've picked it, I kinda need to stay with it. So this is the direction I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pat it down with my fingers. And I'm gonna take my little scrubber and come through here. And this foil adhesive has cured for a full hour. Now, normally you don't necessarily have to do what I'm about to do, but because we are working on a stencil that's been well loved and it's got some tiny stuff, we take a stylus which is this little tool. It has a bead on the end of it, so it doesn't cut through the, the, pa the foil while you're working with, but you know what else works? A little orange wood stick with a point. So you just take it and you run the tool around the edge of the openings. A, that guarantees every spot that needed to get filled gets foil in it, and B, it makes a nice crisp outline for where you had your foil. So I'm gonna go back in with my stylus because that's the tool that I'm most comfortable with because, you know, it's my design, my idea, and my tool. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. <laughs> all right, so I'm taking in all the little stamen and the pistols, getting all these edges filled in neatly. You don't have to do this, but I personally find if I take a few minutes on these stencils and do this with the foil, I get a nice clean edge to my release. Whereas since the foil doesn't easily press down in there without a little help right at those edges, 
the design gets a little softer, fuzzier edge to it, which can be really pretty. So don't, you know, don't turn up your nose at that. Just find the appropriate time to use it. Okay, let's get, I can feel things. I just got to get my little doohickey in there. And if the foil happen, the foil carrier film happens to be a little thicker, this one isn't, but some of them can be a little heavier. This doing this can be even more important because really when the foil carrier film uh, is stiff, it makes it very, very hard without a stylus like this to get a nice crisp detail. Not in big stencils and big openings. It's it's the little stuff. Let's see, there's one, and there's one there, one there. Make sure I didn't forget any. I just wanna feel for everything. And you know, if I lift it up and find that I have missed something, I just lay it right back down and fill it in. I'm going a little carefully because I haven't done a lot of stenciling in the last few weeks. You've seen me doing a lot of uh, epoxy. All right, let's peel that back. Oh yeah, that's a good release there. So I'm gonna take my little thing here. It's gotta get into these little dots that you see here are actually not just part of the pattern that you see in the flowers, but they are also uh, what we call registration marks, which means that when I move this stencil around, it will help me to place it. And you'll see what I mean in just a second as soon as I finish putting all of these in here. Just got one little spot up there. Okay, all done. Now this is I have a lot of adhesive on it, so I hope this tinsel comes up without tearing everything off. Oh, yeah, it worked. Okay, now hopefully you can see that pattern. There you go. And these little dots are the same as these, so they help me to move my pattern around. So now I'm gonna take this, and let's see, which way do I wanna do this? I think I'm gonna do it this way. I'm actually gonna use the flower as the guide for me to move it right now because we've got a lot of interesting spaces on this. So I've got to be careful how I lay this in. There are the dots. There's that. And there we go, so I work on this now. I always kind of go back over a little bit where I just was. And if I get a little extra deposit of foil right where I want it, that would be awesome. So now, we're, wrong thing, that was an exacto knife. That wouldn't have helped much. So we're gonna do this. And then after I finish this wreath, we're gonna go into how I make drawer pulls. Oh, we got to get through this one first. So this is going to take another 15, 20 minutes or so to finish this wreath. Um, so if you're not into watching me do this, just know to come pop back in when you want to, if you want to see the drawer pearls and not this. But I love doing this. This makes me so happy. Almost done. Hold that off. 
fast. I like pulling it off fast. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. Can't do the same with a stencil because I might break some of the bridges. Okay, so now I have to move my pattern over here and get this spot. So first thing I need to do is line up some of these dots here. I'm gonna shift. And then these should go right there. So those will fit there. And there we go. And let's see how much. Well, I might not have enough to cover all of this, but I'll get close. this spot and put it right here. And we'll give it a little scrub. And as always, it's the not pretty side face down against the adhesive because our pattern is actually carried on the back of the film, not on the front. So think of it like, you know, temporary tattoos. You have to put the thing down, pattern side up, dampen it with water. In this case, we're using foil adhesive. There we go, nicely done. Okay, now I'm gonna go shift a little bit down here. And this is always a fun one because I find spots that I don't have completely filled in like that little spot right there. And then it helps me move my way around the wreath. Take your time on this, don't rush. Every time I personally find that every time I rush, uh, yeah, I end up with my pattern being totally screwed up. So now, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I got those little dots there. And I have that. That'll work. Turn it this way. So I gotta turn it so I can see it so that if I have to shift my pattern, I can see how it's lining up. There we go. Move it back up a little bit so you can see it a little better. Now I'm going to take this piece, while I do still have a lot to use on that, I'll save it to use for filling in little spots later. We're getting back into bigger pattern and I kind of need a little more foil to make that work. Come on, cut your little stinker. Doesn't want to cut. The heat and the weather is all fighting against me. Okay, let's put that there. Now let's get in here. Again, we gotta do all our little details. Now, I'm not sure if everybody watching, hey Tony, nice to see you, Desiree, Lisa. Great having you having you all here. And yes, I am having a good day. Um, personally, th some good things are happening right now. And considering everything that this last few months has brought me, I could use that. Um, so I will tell you all a little bit more about it coming soon. But right now, until all the paperwork's done, I need to keep my mouth shut. 
And we all know that's not an easy thing for me, okay? Let's be honest. Okay, let's get in here. All right, while I'm doing this, again, I'll go over the, the application methods for the Artsyville foil adhesive. It can be rolled on, it can be brushed on, it can be sprayed on, but it's not my recommendation because you can't thin it very much to go through a sprayer. And, um, ooh, something flew. Um, it, if you're not spraying it and then cleaning it immediately, uh, the, the adhesive will really gum up your works, your spray gun. Um, it's not, not a method I generally recommend doing with the, with the, the adhesive. I, I, I like people to keep their work, their equipment in working order. Um, it might work with something like a little Wagner sprayer, like you get at the, uh, Home Depot. I have one of those. I have not tried it because I have no desire to spray the adhesive because knowing me, I'd probably do something dangerously dumb with it and end up wearing it like, I'd be like that poor woman with the Gorilla Glue sprayed in her hair, only it would be Artsyville foil adhesive. So not only would my hair be permanently stuck, I'd be attracting stuff. Okay, so we're gonna pull that down. I think we got all of that. And let's get this little spot over here. I just want to rub a little more there. I think my release was a little light-handed in that spot. And see, the, the release with the fo these foils is so good on the Artsyville foil adhesive. You're watching me. I can go in with my fingers and rub if I need to. All right, let's find three of those dots. One. What am I looking at here? One, two, one, two. Sorry, I gotta look at my stencil for just a second to place the right dot in the right opening. Otherwise, um, it won't sit correctly. Now, I am, I am challenging myself here. Uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna be smart turn it this way and come down around the other side because I have so little to work with right there. Um, I have a bad feeling that I could just uh, really screw up the design. So we're not gonna do it that way. Let me get this over here. One, two, three. I wanna think about this, there we go. This is gonna work for me. I want to get a little more pattern set in so that then I can move the stencil better because this will help me keep it from screwing up. Okay, so there's a little bit there. I'm going to go back with my other piece of foil. Okay, I told you I'd use it to fill in little spots. Let's see what I got here. There's that area there. And this is, you know, I used to do huge walls like this. And honestly, you just, sometimes you just have to work the stencil until it works. I know that sounds silly, but um, I've done this all around the room. And while it's easier on small spots, it's really, really easy to make the big boo-boo on a big wall. Um, and I'm telling you that because I've done it. Let's get that there. Um, sometimes people ask me, why don't I just flip the stencil over? That doesn't always work. Um, this design has some organic nature to it, meaning the spacing is not identical. Like for these three dots that I'm working on right here, these three dots, I'm the spacing and angle this way aren't the same as the spacing and the angle right here. So if I flip this and then try to place my stencil back over it not flipped, it screws up the whole pattern. 
um, back to Artsyville foil adhesive. Once it has dried, and we tell you very specifically, it needs to cure for um, an hour. We used to say 30 minutes, but people rushed it so much that it wasn't getting the pro appropriate cure to be stable. So now we're telling you, let it cure an hour. Once it's gotten to that good, hard, one hour cure, you can leave it alone and come back to it like a year later and it'll still be sticky. The point is though that you have to get it to that cure. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a disappointing result. This is water-based, washes, brushes with soap and water and wash them fast. Don't let them sit on the table. Otherwise, you're gonna have to let them sit in a solvent to get the goo out. And sometimes that doesn't work. Once again, ask me how I know. I ruined a whole bunch of brushes one day because I was dumb. Didn't pay attention to the fact they were filled with adhesive. Walked away from them, came back a day and a half later. I could soak them, I got the bristles soft again, but I couldn't get all the adhesive out of the bristles. So I'm trying to share with you my own dumb mistakes so you don't have to make them. That old, what is that commercial? We make the, the mistakes so you don't have to or whatever it is. Well, that's, that's me. I make the mistakes and I make lots of them. But I don't mind making mistakes as mistakes are part of learning. You know, um, you don't want to go through the rest of your life without learning anything new. I love learning something new, even if it's at the expense of my own dignity. Um, which I might have less and less of as I get older. <laughs> Some people become more dignified. I may become less. go. I think we got that one all in. And then I have to do those few little dots there. Oh, and I forgot my little dots here. Let's not forget the dots. Because again, those are our places that help us to move the stencil and get a good repeat that uh, isn't sloppy or crooked. Because let's face it, if I suddenly started going on a weird angle with this, the result would look pretty poor and uh, definitely not worth all the effort. You don't want, this is how you keep your stencils square and straight and the pattern lined up the way you want to. Okay, let's find all our little dots. All right, that's all lined up. So let's go in here. Let's start foiling the last few bits of the pattern. Now you can notice I get faster and faster as I go around this because I become, you have sort of muscle memory of the shape and where things are at once you've done the repeat on it a couple times and it becomes sort of automatic. Let's move this down over here, finish the rest of the pattern up on this flower and then we'll get to the next one. Let's see if I can get anything out of this because I just want to use as much of this foil as possible without, you know, wasting it. I'll look up in just a second and see if you have any questions. No, you can't have a small hint, Lisa. <laughs> uh, 
A-V-F-H is it will wash off with a lot of, um, yeah, it will wash off with a lot of soap and water. That takes a lot. Desiree is saying that you can wash off stuff with a lot of soap and water. Usually, um, I, I have to tell you, I, I'm, because I like to, I enjoy telling on myself. Um, <laughs> I have poured this down my leg by accident last summer. And I thought I had washed it all off and I hadn't. <laughs> oh God, I'm such a dork. Um, and, oh my. So when I got home, I realized I still had foil adhesive on me and I needed to get it off. And so I got in the shower and started scrubbing <laughs> and it was so dry. It was rolling off my skin. It was actually exfoliating me. I uh, had so much stuff on me. <laughs> my legs were a shade lighter, which I wasn't too happy about because I it kind of killed my summer tan. <laughs> But yeah, this will this will this will be sticky forever if you're. All right, I'm gonna cut this around a little bit because I don't want to go back here. Or there's a little pattern that I still have to get, so I'm just gonna cut out the piece of foil that I can use right here and not have everything go flapping around on me and getting in the wrong place. I don't want to turn it on an angle, Maury. Don't do that. You take the grain crooked. So truly, with directional foils, you have to pay attention to the direction and the angle that you're applying it so you don't, especially if it's on something really big, like for me, walls. Um, so it doesn't <laughs> make you nauseous. Uh, point of reference on that was in my mother's house, um, she had one room that had very, very off kilter walls. And so the wallpaper came in and it was a pale stripe and floral pattern, very pretty very, you know, very common. And he couldn't decide. He, he had, they had like a whole big conference about how to apply the wallpaper because usually what you want to do is have your pattern straight in the corners because then it makes your room look square. Well, if we did that, then the whole room was on an angle. If we didn't but if we did it straight, then the corners were in an angle and the room looked weird. And so the first time he did the wall, he did it with, he, my mother couldn't make up her mind. She said, I'm really just, I'm gonna have to see it because I know it's not a great answer either way. So, God love my mother. Um, he put it up the first time so that the seams were straight at the corners. The whole room was on an angle and we all immediately got nauseous just standing there looking at it. So clearly that came down, he put it in, and the corners just looked weird. But that's why you have to pay attention to the direction you're applying something in because, um, yeah, when you do it wrong, it's not pretty. Why is this taking so funny in that one spot? Let me get in there with my scrubber again. There we go. It's just taking funny in a spot. All right, let's pull this back. And then we're going to do this. Let's see, I gotta find my dots here. And that should be it. I am make, going to make myself crazy doing this last one. I do it all the time. I guess really what I should have done and that I didn't do. Well, I can't really do that. There's not that much there. So let's, I may have to just sort of fiddle with this last placement to get it right. 
because there's not um, a whole lot of stuff that's easy to line up with right now. So let's take that one little dot there. That's not right. I can see it now. Let's see if I can find something to line this up with. <laughs> I am going to make myself, like I said, I'm going to make myself a little cuckoo doing this. Because really, I just have to kind of almost estimate it because it's not going to be an easy one. Well, let me, let me see if I do that because that'll get me there. Oh, that worked. That's what I needed right there. It takes a little work to figure these things out sometimes. All right, let's get that one right there. And let's do it with the orange wood because that's what I grabbed first. Got to check everything because we're right at the edge, so I don't want to miss any pattern. And then let's go in here. So we got the whole pattern down now. And now we are going to use our gorgeous brand new Celadon green. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about this one. This is gonna look so pretty over this. I can put that down, I don't need that now. I just gotta find the edge of the foil. This, th this The film on the Celadon is a little th thinner. Usually is the case on, so uh, on some of the solid colors. All right, this Celadon green is so pretty. I can't wait to put it on here. Okay, first, I'm going to rub it with my hands. And if you notice, I am not going to go right up to my edges here, here, or here because I do not want a straight seam here. So you go up to it, but not on it. And what that does is it creates a soft edge with a little blur, so you can lay the foil over it and have no seams. And because we have put so much foil and so much foil adhesive on here, we may see some of the celadon sticking into our other pattern. Don't be surprised. Oh, that's pretty though. Wow, that's so pretty. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take another piece of celadon and get this side. And then I'll probably run over the whole thing with a, a final piece of Celadon just to pick up any little small spots that I might have missed. It's weird. It's squeaking. <laughs> That's funny. Let's go. I want to go back this way too. Do 
exactly the same thing on both sides so I don't screw it up. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh wow, so I need a little bit in here. I can see there's a little thin spot. And I think I wanted to go a little there. Saw a couple thin spots there. The color combination is very subtle and really pretty. So let's see if I can move this around. I'm not sure how the camera is picking up the colors right now. Because um, this is the Celadon green in here. And then the bark gold. And it's just subtle and pretty. Which is kind of the opposite of the other side, which is the very bold and bright. So I still have to do the bow, and I missed a little spot of foil down here. Um, and then we'll seal it. I'm going to figure out what I want to do if I want to add a little glitter to it or anything. And then we're going to seal it up, and it'll be done. And this is a great door or decor item to hang in your home or on your front door for the season and it's fun. All right, so that's set aside now. Got all kinds of stuff going on today. And now we're gonna talk about how to make drawer pulls. So yesterday you saw I'd cast all of these flowers. And let's see, I got all kinds of flowers over here and we cast some leaves and we cast a couple of the big bars like this. So to turn them into drawer pulls is not hard. Now there are two ways of doing this. When you're pouring it in the mold like this, you can wait until you can pour your pour, but leave a little head space here in the mold and then put a bolt in here, pour some more epoxy on it, let it sit and let it set in there. That works sometimes for me. I have a habit of things tend to tip over on me, so I had to come up with a different way of doing it that was a little more stable for, my, for me and my, my klutzy self. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take a drill. And I actually love this idea because then my poles fit any width that I'm, of, of item that I'm working with. So I'm going to take my drill. Let's... All right, and if you don't like the sound of a drill, turn the sound off now. Yeah. Sorry, I need should be using one hand to hold it, but I'm also trying to help my other hand. And all of that that's stuck on there is just drilled out epoxy. Hurt your drill. And instead of having to find something that the bolt's the right length for and then I have to cut the bolt off, I can do this this way, come from the back and use a regular wood screw. Now, why am I choosing a wood screw? You could use a metal screw too, but you want something that's sharp so that when you turn your screw, into the resin, it's catching, and then it's also cutting. Because I drilled the hole a little smaller than the screw. And the cool thing is, if this screw is not the right length, I can replace it. I can use a screw that's this long, or I could use a screw that's as long as the part that's sticking out. And this is so handy. So we can do this with small ones. Now you have to go gently with the small ones because it's more likely you'll screw through them if you're not careful. So we're gonna do this. See what I said about screwing through, drilling through? I just did that. So let's try that one again. I don't want 
want to drill through like they did with the other one. And I can take a screw again. Ugh. Sorry, folks, my finger's still healing, so I got to work slowly. I'm going to take the screw, screw it in. Come on, give me a little grab. There we go. I'm working with hand, y'all know I'm working with a little handicap here. My hands just don't want to work as easily right now. Thanks to, that one's not going to work because it's going to fight me. I need to drill a little deeper. always make your hole ever so slightly smaller than the screw because you need that to happen so that the, the uh, turning of the screw here catches into the epoxy. And this grabs hard. I mean, it's not like you can pull it out. So you can, but if you wanted to not, if you wanted to have a little bolt, you could set in a little something here to make this stick out further. But I think these are so cute. This one, this looks weird. Like, why would I use that as a drawer pull? So I'm gonna flip the camera up and we're gonna look at the piece of furniture right behind me. So while this looks huge in my hand, think of how cool something like that would be on a door like this as your pull. You know, you're just kind of grabbing it and go, that would be so cool. We'll make a, this rose into a drawer pull right while y'all are watching. And I'm gonna make my tulips into drawer pulls. Oops, that slid. It's got to be careful. Okay, so here we go again. Another screw. Now, of course, if you're not making these yourselves and you want me to make you some, I am more than happy to make them custom to your specifications. And I have access to all kinds of molds with different flowers. But look how pretty that would be. Sorry, I forgot to flip that down. Look how pretty that would be too, on just a, you know, a drawer pull on a dresser. And they're, they're tough. So we have now gone through uh, drawer pulls in different forms making your own drawer pulls out of your epoxy castings. I love that. And then we have our pretty, pretty, pretty celadon and wood grain foil wreath. Look how lovely that is. So it's been a wonderful time here with you all. I appreciate you all sticking it out with me. So have a terrific, terrific evening, and I will see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.